Hey, it's Nathan again, and today I'm going to be painting a llama using digital watercolor in Procreate. So have you ever sat down and not known what to draw or paint? Just not had an idea for a subject matter. So this happens to me from time to time, and I usually default to a big cat, like a lion or a tiger. And I realized this, and I didn't want to do it again, so I went to my wife and I asked, you know, what, what would be a good subject to paint? And she says a llama with a flower in its mouth, which I thought was really uh, random and oddly specific. Uh, but I thought it'd be a good idea and it would be a fun uh, subject to paint. I've never painted a llama before and I wasn't even really familiar with what they looked like. So I went to unsplash.com, which is a great resource for royalty free stock photos. And I found these four llama photos and I was immediately drawn to this one because of the variation in its fur, the, the eyes are a bit bigger and the, the nose uh, is bigger than, than in this one. Uh, I don't know if it was maybe a, a wider angle lens or if it was just the fact that it was closer up, but this one just, uh, the, the facial features were really prominent. And then of course this one, it's got some grass in its mouth, so it would be um, really easy to add the flower, you know, using this grass and how it kind of bends over and using that as reference. Now, I kept these other two images uh, just in case I needed them to have them on hand, but primarily I'm going to be working from these two. Now, I've got all of my stock or reference photos open in an app called Vizref. It's V-I-Z-R-E-F. And that's the app that I use to keep track of all of my reference photo collections. So I'm going to keep it open to the right or to the left here, and I'm going to be working in Procreate. Okay, I'm going to be using a couple of products here that I created. One is the Master Watercolor Brush Set, um, but it's not a requirement. You, you can use whatever watercolor brushes that you have on hand that you like to use. The other is the Watercolor Paper Texture. It's from the Ultimate Canvas Creator, but again, it's not a requirement. You don't have to use a, a paper texture at all, or you can use one that you have on hand. But I'll link these two products in the description below in case you want to give them a try. So starting out here, I have an initial rough sketch. Now it's really rough and not refined. It's not gonna actually be a part of the painting um, in the end. We'll eventually turn this layer off. Um, this is just giving me a guide to work from. I based it mostly off of this photo. Uh, I added a little bit more of a curve. This he's real straight up and down here, but I added just a little bit of a curve in the neck and the ears just for a little bit of interest. One thing that I'm gonna try with this particular painting is to lay in some watercolor and then go with something like a the equivalent of a colored pencil to do some of the detail in the fur. I've been doing this a lot with traditional media using colored pencils. So I want to kind of give that a try just to get in some of the details. Now you could also use a really small watercolor brush or just a really small round, but I'm going to try and use um, what would be the equivalent of a colored pencil once we get to the detail stage. This particular sketch is just built up on basic shapes. So there's a circle for the head, there is a circle for the nose, just a rectangle for the neck, and a couple rectangles for the ears. Okay, and then I just built up a little bit of, uh, of just rough line work to give me an idea of where the fur, the eyes, and the nose are. Now, thinking about a plan for color for this painting, I, I'm drawn to this sort of uh, orange or uh, sienna type color in the, the fur here. And I'm also seeing like some blues and purples around the nose, maybe in the eyes and some of the shadows here. So kind of an orange and purple complementary uh, scheme is, is, is uh, it's one that I use often. So I'm already, uh, I'm already drawn to that, uh, that particular color scheme. So we're going to try to stick with sort of like warm oranges and then cool purple blue type tones. So the canvas that I'm working with is 3000 by 4000. It's 3000 pixels wide, 4000 pixels tall, and it's 300 DPI. So I find the sketch and the white paper uh, at first, it's, it's a little bit intimidating just having this just sketch on stark white paper. It's kind of like you don't know where to start. And one thing that I like to do to, to fix that is to just add a bit of a transparent wash 
uh, something just a little bit abstract to, to build up color from. And that's something that I do with a traditional watercolor on paper as well. I'll add a bit of water over the sketch and just add in some real light transparent color um, just to give myself something to work from. So let's do that now. I'm going to start with a light purple color. And I'm going to go over to the washes brush set. And I'm going to go under light washes. And I want to start with a pretty large transparent wash. I'm going to tap in here and get another one. just to add some variety. And it's, that's nothing specific. It just gives us a, just a base color to work from. And it already starts us down the road of a little bit, uh, little bit of abstraction. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is lay in some of this orange fur that we see in the reference. So I'm gonna create another new layer. And I want to use a brush that provides uh, a lot of texture and a lot of Variation. So I'm going to go back over to the main brushes set. I'm going to scroll down to the mixer brushes. And I'm going to go with the first one, which is called Wet Mix. And I'm going to choose a good orange color, something like that. And I just want to paint in some of the, uh, some of this brown orange type fur that we see here. And Probably going to have to scale the brush down a bit. Now this brush has a lot of variation with pressure. So it's going to get dark with hard pressure and then light again with lighter pressure. So there's a ton of variation. There's also a bit of color variation. If you don't have this brush set, you don't have this brush. I'll show you another way to get some color variation here in just a bit. That's a lot of fun. Now I'm just using the sketch as a guide and, and the reference image to kind of direct me on where to place this orange wash. And I'm also going to spread it out here just a bit, a little bit more than what I'm doing here. I'm gonna make the brush a bit bigger and just sort of spread the wash out just a bit so it's not just sticking to the the areas in my sketch. It, as though we painted wet into wet and the the uh, or the paper's already wet, so the paint's gonna spread out a little bit. actually a little bit of orange there in the middle of the nose. I'm going to add that uh, in as well. All right, so to get a little bit uh, more color variation in what we just painted, another method to do that is to go to uh, hue saturation under adjustments and choose pencil. And if you take the brightness way down, you can see where you're painting here. Just gonna add a little few areas. Okay. And then take the brightness back up to 50% and adjust the hue. You get a lot of really crazy color variation. And I actually really like this pink mixed in with the orange a bit because it kind of gives us a nice transition between the uh, purple wash that we already laid in. So adjust that a little bit. So now I've got kind of orange and yellow and pink um, into that, into that uh, second wash and we didn't even have to work very hard to get it. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is paint in some of these darks that we see like around the nose and the eyes. There's some in the ears here and just some shadow areas. I want to paint in some of that dark detail. 
And we're going to do this using probably some purples, some darker purples, and some darker blues. So let's create a new layer. And I'm going to start out with just sort of a dark purplish blue color. May go a little bit darker, but we're going to start there. And I want to go back up to maybe some detail rounds, some detail brushes. And let's try the sharp sable brush and see. That's probably pretty good. We'll start with that brush. We just want one that has uh, has some sharper edges. Like this brush has got a nice sharp edge on it and we'll probably blend a little bit of those edges out, but we want to have some of that sharp edge in place. And I'm going to start with the nose. I'm going to take this smudge brush and I'm going to I'm going to try to smudge with the same um, sharp sable and just see see what that does. I'm just going to smooth out or smudge some of these uh, some of these sharper edges that you see, but not all of them. Actually, I'm going to switch to uh, I'm going to switch to the loaded into wet brush for my smudger. It's going to give me a little bit of a softer edge. Okay, so I'm going to take a different brush. Let's try the wet edge detail. No, let me try. Some, let me try a different one. About uh, let's try loaded with paint because that's going to be a super, uh, super opaque brush. And let's go with a more blue because we're going to make a we're going to make another pass. This time um, we're going to be even darker. We get a little bit more blue. We're going to get a little darker. And we're going to get our darkest dark stuff that you see like here and the nostril and in the eye here. Oops, my brush has got to be much smaller. A lot of times with watercolor, you're working from light to dark you're going you start light and you start just gradually getting darker now with this particular painting we're probably going to go back to the lights again because we're going to hit some highlights in our fur now in a traditional watercolor you would be either not painting those areas initially and leaving the white of the paper or you can come back with white gouache or acrylic and paint over the watercolor to bring lights back. Or you can use a colored pencil 
which is what I mentioned before, that would do the same thing, especially if you're talking about fine details like fur. Okay, we're probably going to do some more dark details, darker details in a bit, but this will get us started down that road. And I'm going to take my smudge brush again, scale it down a bit, and just blur a few of those edges there, or smudge some of those edges. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is create a new layer and add in some of our highlight areas back. Now, one thing we could do would be to combine our layers that we have thus far and then use the eraser to go back and erase in the highlights. Because as I mentioned, in a traditional watercolor, you would have had to have left those areas blank. But I want to do it this way because for one, I'm not ready to use pure white just yet for the highlights. And I want them to be on their own layer so that if we want to come back later and add some more washes on a layer underneath, the highlight layer will, will still be preserved. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add a new layer above everything else. And let's start by, let's sample this light sort of tan cream color. And let's go make it, let's make it lighter, not quite white, but getting really close. Okay, and I want to use the same, I'm going to use the same loaded with paintbrush that we've been using. Uh, I want it to be pretty small though. Okay, I'm going to start by just adding back in some of these highlight areas. It's a little bit too small of a brush. Let's go a little bit bigger. Okay, same as before, we want to take the smudge tool and just blur or smudge some of our harder edges. Just so everything looks nice and blended.
Okay, now let's take the same color that we've been using and let's add in some of this fur detail. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a new layer. And now this would be where maybe in a traditional sense, uh, the colored pencil would come in because it's gonna be some really fine detail. We're just gonna add a little bit of, of a fur texture. In order to do that, I'm going to switch over to the sketch pencil. And let's see about our size, looks pretty good. And I wanna just begin to start getting in some of this just fur texture, just some of these marks that would represent fur. And I'm actually gonna make my color just a little bit lighter so we can see it over the layer that we just painted. This is really light, so you might not be able to see it on camera as well. I'm just putting in some of these strokes that would just kind of represent fur. I'm going to switch the grip on my pencil just to get a little bit of a broader line using the, uh, the side of the pencil. Okay, now I'm going to just sample a darker color and I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna be paying attention to more like more shadow areas in the fur. And I'm going to do another new layer and I'm going to switch to white and I'm going to use the, the pencil again. And this time I'm going to get these really, really bright highlight areas in the fur.
I'm going to smudge a little bit of my pencil work here too, just so it blends in with the painting a bit. I usually find that I smudge more than I erase. So I'm not completely removing what I just did. I'm just sort of blending it in to the painting. I think while I'm on this top layer, I'm going to go ahead and I'm zoom in and detail these eyes just a little bit because right now I've just got this dark circle and I just want to add a bit, bit more detail around the eyes. Let's see, if we look close, there's a little bit of a, of a gray uh, reflection and a little bit of orange that's maybe coming from the fur that's, that's uh, bouncing up into the eye. So let's see if we can do that. And then we've got this sort of gray color. I'm going to try this purple. And we've probably got something that's a little bright. Let me tone that down just a little bit. Okay, we've got probably the same thing happening. Yeah, same thing happening in this eye. Oops, let me go back to that lighter purple. Just create that reflection and then that sort of orange that was happening here. And I'm gonna go back to white and just add a couple of hairs that are going over the eye. All right, before we turn the sketch layer off, let's go ahead and uh, paint and detail the, the flower. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a new layer here. And I'm gonna get a, let's get a good pink color to kind of go with our color scheme that we already have going on. And I'm gonna choose, um, let's try this wet edge detail. That will, no, that's not, uh, it doesn't have a sharp enough point for on this, for these petals. Um, let's try this uh, smooth watery round. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Okay. I just want a, a round brush that will get in there for some of the detail of these petals. Let me go back over some of them. Okay, let's get a yellow center. I'm gonna darken it just to get a little bit of a shadow. And let's see. From there, why don't we go ahead and add some green stems? Because we turn the sketch off, we're going to lose the, the stems that are in the uh, llama's mouth. So let's go ahead and get a green, a dark green. And let's use, uh, let's use the loaded with paintbrush because it needs to be really opaque so that we can see, we can see these lines. We have to make it smaller. I'm going to grab a uh, more of a yellow green highlight to put on our stems here. I 
Let's see what happens when we uh, we turn our sketch layer off. We're gonna need a little bit more detail, I think, in our flower because that's a little that's a little too rough, I think. So let's see. Turn our sketch back on. What we could probably do is just take the sketch and I'm a free three finger swipe down and copy and paste. Now when we turn our sketch off, we still have some of our flower detail, but what we'll do is we'll just smudge a little bit of that out so it looks like it's more part of the, the painting. And I think I still have the loaded into wet for the uh, for the smudge brush here. Saves us from having to redraw the detail in the flower. And I'm going to set alpha lock. I'm going to turn on alpha lock for the uh, that sketch portion of the flower. And let's just grab a darker pink color and just make those sketch lines a dark pink. And now that we've turned the sketch off, I feel like we're missing a little bit of detail that was happening right here in the face. You can see below the eye. There's just a little bit there that just kind of gave us a hint of, of the side of the llama's face. So let's let's go in and let's just sample a that orange color. Maybe grab this one right here. Now let's go back to that uh, brush that we had before. I think it was the Sharp Sable brush that kind of had that... Uh, that hard edge that you can see here in the ear. And let's go back to, um, we'll drop down to this layer and just put in a new area here. Let's smudge some of it back. Just so we have something there. Let's see if anything, if anything else is needed. Maybe a little bit out here. And a little above the eyebrows there. Smudge some of that out so it looks like the paint is spreading out into the background. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to go ahead back to the, the dark wash layer and I'm just going to smudge a little bit of the hard edge on this ear in a couple of spots. One thing that I like to do towards the end of a lot of my paintings is to add a bit of uh, splatter. And as I'm looking at it now, I'm just seeing a few little details that uh, were in the sketch that are that didn't make it through to the paintings. I'm just going to touch that up just a little bit, like that part on the mouth there. And I see a couple of stray lines that I'm just going to kind of smudge out on the, the fur texture that we added. Just little little bitty things, little bitty details that I see that just kind of make the whole painting work. Yeah, so I'm going to add a layer at the top here, and this is going to be for splatters. I usually add some dark, darker splatters and then maybe some white or lighter splatters. So let's go over. There's a splatter brush set uh, that I'm going to be using that comes with the master watercolor set. But of course, like I said before, any splatter brushes that you have will probably work. Um, I'm going to use the tiny specks brush and just kind of throw a few splatters that are just uh, around that are just kind of going out away from the painting. And I think it just kind of adds some a nice bit of detail. Go ahead and add a couple of colors as well. A little bit of orange. 
now. Let's get this sort of a pink color. Let's try another one. Uh, let's get the drips one and see what that does. Add a little variation in our splatters. Okay, I'm going to also get white. I'm going to put this one on a new layer just in case I want to change it. And let's go with one of these splatter stamps, maybe uh, wet splatter three. Make it bigger. Drop that one there. I was trying to, to, to not land any splatters over the eyes because the eyes are usually kind of a focal point. And when you throw a splatter over the eyes, it just it serves more as a distraction than anything else. So I try to avoid that. I think that works pretty good. So as a final step and something that is completely optional, I mean, I would be happy to leave this painting as is and, and call it done. But just, just a, a, a little thing I like to do with some textures that is just fun and it's just experimental just to kind of see what happens. Um, but I'm going to go to the bottom most layer above our sketch and um, I'm going to add in some wash uh, wash textures, some JPEG files that come with master watercolor brush set. Um, again, this is just purely for fun, purely optional. It's just an experiment, but let's add a couple and just see what happens. So we're going to insert a file and I've already navigated to the, uh, the washes that come with the brush set. And let's try this one because it's already, it already kind of matches the color scheme. We won't have to do any uh, color change on it. So I'm going to drop it in again. It's going below all the other layers and we can move it around a little bit. And I like the color. I like what it's doing out here and this stuff. This is a little bit of a hard edge here. So I'm going to take the blur tool and I'm going to go down to or one of the smudge brushes. Uh, let's try uh, wet, wet edge smudge. And this it will, should just completely smudge that out. Still a little bit visible. But it's much softer. Okay, so that's really cool. It added some color variation, some things that weren't there before, some cool texture. So let's try one more and just uh, see what happens here. Let's insert another file. And this one looks pretty cool. So does that uh, let's, let's try this one right here let's see because again the color scheme kind of matches already okay wow yeah <laughs> all right so now let's see about uh well let's scale it for one okay so i like the idea of everything kind of going up because the ears are already kind of in that direction so this is kind of adds to that a bit it also added this bit over here to the side of the face let me see if i can line that up a little bit better and so it added to the shape of the face a bit which is really cool so let's go ahead and set that to multiply and i'm going to do that so that it becomes transparent and we can see the wash that we added previously and this little bit that's sticking out here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blur that out because I don't think that needs to be there. It's, it's really cool. It changed, just adding these washes really changed, changed a lot. So we went from that to that in just a few minutes with really uh, very little, little work or effort involved. But I do see a couple of these highlights are really bright now, and I see a couple areas where we could probably blur those some more. So maybe I'm just going to go ahead and combine those layers, actually, just so I can smudge a little, a little bit of that, smudge them all together, just so there's not as hard of an edge as some of those. Uh, 
All right, I think that's going to do it for this one. I hope that you had fun and that you enjoyed it. I hope this inspired you to paint your own llama with a flower in its mouth. Be sure and share it with me if you do. You can find links to my Instagram below as well as the Design Cuts community. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.